Jeffrey Sachs, professor from uh, Columbia University. He's also a director of the Columbia University's Earth Institute. Professor Sachs, in the early half of a program, we certainly had a review of some of the big uh, social experiments we've been doing around the world, poverty alleviation, Millennium Development Goals, things like that. But I know now you're working together with some of the other experts around the world on the Sustainable Development Goals. It sounds abstract enough for us. Help us to understand at the very beginning what exactly is sustainable development. It's so abstract that everybody talk about it, but it seems that there's no specific content yeah, this recognized is, worldwide. This is a, a great question and a very big issue because uh, this concept of sustainable development goes back more than a quarter century. But what is it? And what it is uh, can be simply expressed most of the world is saying we want to get richer uh, we want to have economic development but what's happening and we see it in china for example but also in the united states and other places is that the way that the economies are growing is also creating many other problems mm -hmm. social problems right. like big inequality and environmental problems like climate change we feel the climate change with storms with the heat waves with droughts, with floods. We understand that part, so exactly what does it mean? So what sustainable development means is not just one thing, economics, but three things. Economic development, social inclusion, that everybody's part of the progress, and environmental sustainability. It's much harder than economic development. But how to do it? Nobody has ever had any rich experiences of how to handle the three things all at the same time. And now you are talking about sustainable development goals, which is the design of ideas for the United Nations and for countries to adopt after 2020. Is that the idea? The idea will be that as of 2015, when the Millennium Development Goals finish, mm we should move to sustainable development goals for another 15-year period from 2015 to 2030. What should those goals include? Those goals should include basically four things. I've mentioned three of them already. Right. Economic development, uh, equality for men and women, uh, making sure that minority groups are properly treated. The equity issues. The equity issues, the fairness. Third is environmental protection to stop the climate change danger, to protect our water supplies, to protect nature and biodiversity and ecosystems. And the fourth thing is that both our businesses and our governments should improve their performance to support those other three objectives. So we, I like to think that there are four different aspects to sustainable development, economic, social, environmental, and good governance. Of course, those goals sound wonderful, but how to achieve these goals really should be the essence of this whole campaign. I remember a Kung Fu star, probably our audience will also be familiar with that, Bruce Lee, as a Kung Fu star, he said something about goals. Here's what he said. He said, a goal is not always meant to be reached. It often serves simply as something to aim at, end of quote. Is that what you're thinking about when it comes to sustainable development goals? You have quite a number of difficulties. There's no proved experiences. The world has not been successful in achieving some of the other goals being set in front of it previously. And then you also have this crisis going on, geopolitical changes going on. We all understand that in our world today. Lack of political leadership leadership of certain countries that are rising or that are already the existing power. So are these goals are only supposed to be idealistic things for people to look at or they are actually achievable? Well, first, I would not want to argue much less fight with Bruce Lee. So I think he has a, <laughs> I think he has a good point. Mm -hmm. And I like to quote uh, another person, President John F. Kennedy who 50 years ago said something very smart about goals also. He said, by defining our goal more clearly, by making it seem more manageable and less remote, we help all people to see it, to draw hope from it, and to move irresistibly toward it. Mm. And so if we can define goals clearly, then we can help to achieve them. In many countries, the goal has been raise GNP, raise income. Now the goal has to be more complicated. <coughs> raise income, 
make sure it's fair, and also make sure the environment is protected. Let's define those goals clearly and then work out how we do that. What kind of energy system, what kind of transportation systems, mm -hmm. uh, how should health care be arranged so that everybody has access to health care. I believe we can make these goals, which are very big and difficult goals, like you say, never been uh, achieved yet. We can make them more manageable mm. if we're very clear about how to do that. And that's why Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has asked me to form a global network, we call it the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, of scientists and engineers and, there are and business also leaders. There are many Chinese leaders in this. The co-chairman of the entire effort is uh, a Professor Shui Lan. He's a very distinguished Tsinghua professor University, at Tsinghua yeah. University in Beijing, uh, a dean of the School of Public Policy and Management, uh, and uh, many other uh, Chinese uh, leaders and participants in this. It's a worldwide group. And Secretary General has said, that we need more problem solving. We need more practical solutions. We need solutions uh, like we discussed earlier that are targeted and specific for a particular place, not just uh, something you read in, a, in an academic book, but is practical for uh, a particular location. So your main point, your overarching point, I agree with 100%, it's never been done. But what's our alternative? Our alternative, if we continue on the business as usual, really is a potential disaster for the world. Think about every year more floods, more droughts, more heat waves, uh, more terrible storms. Right. Do we really want this? Of course we don't. We have to change direction. We have to figure out how to do it. I certainly see the urgency, sir, that you've been advocating. However, it is exactly the solution part that is the most difficult part. Absolutely. Even for a city like Beijing, which is quite advanced in its economy, however, it has a great difficulty in, in trying to make sure its air can be cleaner. This is something that has to be done for a period of time rather than five years or even 10 years. So worldwide comp situation could be even more complicated, plus the lack of leadership issue that I've been talking about. Who is going to have play that role of the leadership? Um, is it going to be specific country? Is it going to be civil societies? Are governments these days still functioning to the degree that they used to when it comes to changes in the world? Governments are having a hard time now because they can't cope very easily with these changes. And all over the world uh, you see uh, difficulties, unrest, economic crisis, uh, environmental crisis. Uh, and the result of that is that governments feel quite overwhelmed. Many governments are broke right now. They don't have right. money in the budget for this. So uh, this doesn't excuse us from our responsibility. It does mean we have to invent a new way of doing things. Now, my idea, which is not my idea alone, but the idea that I subscribe to is that if we have global goals, whether it's Bruce Lee's idea that that gives us something to aim for, or President Kennedy's idea that that makes it seem more manageable uh, and uh, less remote. Those goals could help orient activities all over the world. And then city by city, province by province, working out. So what do we do? How do we use solar power? How do we use wind power? That's part of the answer. Then global networks of scientists answering questions mm. uh, and engineers, uh, how to make electric vehicles work better, uh, how to make our crops more efficient so they don't require or demand so much water use. Right. What about the geopolitical changes? You have rising China, you also have the existing power, the United States, certainly the two has been trying to figure out how to look at each other and how to coexist with one another. On the other hand, you have an international mechanism, the United Nations, whose power, some arguably say, has been declining rather than rising. So once again, an international mechanism, international goal, as you have just mapped out, how well can they work when it comes to all these dramatic changes geopolitically? We used to have a Cold War, two giants uh, facing each other with nuclear weapons. It was a pretty frightening world. 
but politically it seemed a little simpler. You knew that there were two sides, basically. Uh, now we have a completely multipolar world. Uh, there's uh, power uh, everywhere at uh, local level. Of course, China is becoming one of the most important uh, global actors without question. It will have the world's largest economy very soon. Uh, it's playing an enormous role, positive role, uh, that I see with my own eyes in Africa's development, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's no question that simply because of scale, economic success, uh, technological might, China will surely have to play uh, a role not only in solving China's big problems, which are very big internally, but also helping the world to solve these big problems. But it won't be China alone. It won't be even uh, the U.S. and China, as sometimes called the G2. Uh, it's going to have to be many countries uh, all participating, but I hope all saying, yes, we share the goals. We have to figure out in our country how to make those goals work. Mm -hmm. And then some of the very big uh, actors, uh, whether it's China, uh, the United States, right. the European Union, Japan, India, playing a special role to help make sure that the world, uh, Brazil, I would add, that the world uh, as a whole is cooperating adequately. It's a, it's a big challenge. The problem is I don't see an alternative to All it. Right. Uh, one could go back to the classroom and say, too hard, that's useless. One could say, go slow, that won't work for our world. We have to take on the big challenges now. I see your point and I see where the passion comes from. We want to thank you for explaining all of these and let's hope that big puzzle can be resolved with pieces being put inside. Thank you so much, Professor Sachs, for being with us. Thank you very much. Real pleasure. Thank you for watching. I'm Tianwei in Beijing. Bye.